When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? I tried to take life back right out of the hands of the king of the world. How could I make you so small when you're the one that holds it all? When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world yes. just a whisper of your voice can take the seat so who am I to try to take the lead still I run ahead and think we're strong enough when you're When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? Yes, yes, yes. I tried to take life back right out of the hands of the king of the world. How can I make you so small when you're the one that holds it all? When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world. Ooh, you set it on motion. Every single moment, you brought it more to me. Now you're holding on to me. Because when did I forget that you always Tried to take life back right out of the hands of the king of the world. How could I make you so small when you're the one that holds it all? How could I forget that you've always been the king of the world? You will always be the king. He's the king of the world. Won't you put your hands together and give God praise? Yeah. He is the king. He is the king of the world. of this great church and to each of you my brothers and my sisters in Christ Amen. I greet you this Sabbath morning with the salutation of the Apostle Paul to the church at Rome grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Sabbath. What a joy it is to be a child of God in the house of God. I'm grateful to Pastor Peterson for his kindness allowing me to stand in the sacred desk that he has been assigned and Elder Wayne 
Uhara, uh, who in his graciousness invited me to stand in his stead. God bless you, Lord Wayne. And I'm most grateful to my colleagues in military ministry, Chaplains Nozawa. And, uh, why am I forgetting your name, my brother? But uh, we're brothers in ministry. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you know, I'm excited about being together, and, and I have we have some of our family members from Calvary. You're from Calvary, won't you stand? Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. Amen. I love how Sister Sister Viney put it. He's visiting, but he's not a visitor. Because we're all part of the same family of God. You know, some churches have you know, 20,000 members, 30,000 members. And they say, we're a big church. But, you know, the Seventh-day Adventist church is one church in many locations. And we just many different campuses. And so you may have 50,000 in your church, but we, we got 20 million. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord around the world. And I'm just grateful to God that he has blessed me in my first duty station to be sent to 2nd Marine Division. Amen. 2nd Marine Division is second to none. Do I have any Marines in the house? Amen. Amen. I'm so grateful to God. But yesterday, Colonel, I, I got an email from an uh, HM2, I believe it was. It was my new orders. And so my new orders are to the Naval Station Bahrain. And I am to detach from 2nd Marine Division on the 19th of November. And I am to report for duty no later than the 19th of December. I was hoping to have a little bit more time, but Somebody in the military understands that they don't cut suggestions. No. How about a witness? No, that's right. they, they, they cut orders. They, they cut orders. And so, so I want to continue to enjoy as much time with you as our days are numbered together. But wherever I am, Jacksonville and Calvary will always, forever, be in my heart. Amen. Ah, oh, I'm so grateful. Who did the bulletin? Who did the bulletin? It's so beautiful. Amen. Uh, appreciate the artistic work. God bless you. The bulletin second to Kingston, I guess. Uh, praise the Lord. The Spirit of God impressed upon me a particular passage where our scripture reading was found in the 11th chapter <clears throat> of the Gospel according to St. John. I'm grateful that I'm, I'm virtually fully healed from my pneumonia, but there's a tiny cough that's still there. The 11th chapter of St. John, I wish to invite you to return there with me in your Bibles, and if you will, I invite you to rise reverently for the reading of the Word of God. God's Word is not like man's Word. It's, do I have a witness anywhere? There, there's, there's power all right, Brother Fat, there's power in the Word of God. In keeping with the tradition of Ezra, we are rising reverently for the reading of the Word of God. I'm going to read in your hearing verses 1 through 6 from the King James Version of the Amen. Bible. It is written, are, are you there? If you're there, just declare, I have arrived. I have arrived. Hallelujah. John 11, verse 1, it is written, <clears throat> Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister, who everybody? It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. 
Therefore, his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou would, everybody, lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto what, everybody? Yeah. Unto death, but for the glory of God. That the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus, what everybody? Loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. I repeat again, verse 6. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. For a short while this afternoon, I wish to share with you on the subject. When God does not come, when you call him. When God does not come when you call him. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me. Melt me. Mold Fill me, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. Heavenly Father, you be glorified and let your people be edified. This is our prayer. And we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated in the house of the Lord our God. May I ask a favor of you? If you have a neighbor next to you, would you turn to your neighbor and if you got a neighbor, would you take your neighbor by the hand, if you don't mind? And, and I want you to look at your neighbor. In fact, if you don't mind, would you gaze into your neighbor's eyes? Well, not at me, but would you look into your neighbor's eyes? And if it's a male, say brother. If it's a female, say sister. And, and, and then say these words. I don't care how spiritual you are. Every now and then, God won't come when you call him right away. Amen, amen, amen. When, when, when God does not come when you call him, I... I was raised by the most amazing parents. But uh, Master Sergeant, I was raised old school. Amen. All right. And 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 I was raised to to be obedient to my parents. Amen. I, I see some parents and, 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 and their children negotiate with them. And, in fact, sometimes their children tell them what they're going to do. I, 
I was raised on the way to be obedient. And, and one of the very important points that I was instructed on being obedient about is, Colonel, when my father or my mother called me, I was to show up right away. Do I have two or three witnesses in the house? And that was not negotiable, why he had uh, a body. In fact, in fact, in fact, if I did not come right away, I, I was going to have some problems that day. Uh, it, 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 it was very important. And when they called me, I did not hesitate or procrastinate. I had to come. Uh, Brother Kingston, right? Right. Now, it was actually a two-way street. It really was a two-way street because I knew as a child that if I was ever in trouble, if I was ever in pain, if, I, if there was an accident of crisis and I called out to my father or my mother, they too would come Amen. right away at a moment's notice. I'll never forget. I, I, it, was, it was summertime. I was, I was rolling around on one of those uh, big wheels. I know I'm dating myself from the 80s, amen. But oh, yeah. oh, and, 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 and this bumblebee somehow attached himself to the back of my head, and I screamed out in agony for my mother. And I don't know where she was, but she showed up uh, right away. Because uh, I called out. And, and, and so it's, it, it's interesting because, uh, yes, uh, when I was raised, when my Heavenly, my earthly father or mother called me, I had to show up, and, and if I called them, they would immediately show up right away. Our heavenly father, uh, he actually has similar expectations. Yes, when, when, when God calls people, he expects them to respond and react right away. Some of you Bible readers remember a man named Moses was in the middle of the wilderness and came across a bush that was burning but wasn't being burned up. And he heard a voice say, Moses, take your shoes off. Where you're standing is cool. He had to respond and react right away. God, when God calls you, he expects you to come or go right away. Little Samuel heard a voice calling him, and he kept running uh, to Eli's room because he had been raised right. He, he showed up right away, and by the third time, Eli realized this is God. He said, little boy, if you hear the voice again, when it calls you, shout out, speak, Lord. For thy servant, God, God expects us when he calls us to respond and react right away. Some Bible reader remembers a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus. He was headed to Damascus on a mission for the government. But uh, he was knocked off his horse and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why? Persecutest thou me? And the voice of Jesus expected an immediate response. That's when God calls us. That's what he expects. In fact, when Isaiah was reflecting upon the national disaster of the death of the king, in Isaiah chapter 6, he saw God high. And lift it up. And in verse 8, God said, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah understood that he needed to respond and react right away. And he said, uh, Here am I. Send me. But here's the irony. While God, when he calls us, expects us to respond and react right away every now and then. Uh, you can call on God, but he won't show up right away. You cannot convince me, you cannot convince me that, that when Joseph was thrown by his own blood brothers, 
into a pit. He wasn't praying to God and saying, God, get me out of this pit and get me home. But God didn't show up. You can't tell me when he was uh, wrongfully accused of sexual assault and thrown into prison, he didn't pray every day, God, I'm innocent, get me out of this prison and, and get me home again. But God did not show up right away. I'm here to tell you that, that God, every now and then, won't come when you call him. Uh, but do I have two of the witnesses who can testify he'll be there? Right on time. But, 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 but the problem is, what happens? How do you make it when he doesn't come when you call him? And so, to make my case, I call to the witness stand two sisters named Mary and Martha. They're prepared to testify that that while they loved the Lord, they called on him. But he didn't come when they called him right away. Now, 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 now here's the thing. Now, you know, some folk we don't tell our problems to. That's right. Uh, in fact, it's because we know we have superficial friendships. You know, we call so and so is my friend, but we know when push comes to shove, we don't expect uh, that person to be there for us. But there are some people whom we're so tight with, Dora, that we, when we get in trouble, we expect them to come when we call. If, if, if you are. In a hospital room, you had an accident. There are some people you expect when you call them to stop doing whatever they're doing and show up yeah. right away. Mm -hmm. And because of the relationship between Jesus and Lazarus, the, these two sisters, when they told him, Jesus, the one that you love, is sick that Jesus would stop doing whatever he was doing and show up right away. But he did. The Bible says he heard the word and stayed put for two days. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? And, and what does it mean for us when we get in trouble? And we call on God. But nothing changes. The diagnosis does not change. The marriage does not change. Your children do not change. Your job situation does not change. Your financial situation does not change. How can you make it when God does not come when you call him? Well, I wish to suggest to you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, there are at least three reasons why God didn't come when Martha and Mary called. And the first reason is the glory of God. Can somebody shout glory of God? Glory of God. I hope your Bibles are still open because I'm preaching the word of God. John 11 and verse 3 and 4 say this. John 11, 3 and 4. Therefore his sister said unto him, Lord, say, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Verse 4, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. What I'm trying to let you know is that what Jesus was trying to let them know was the fact that Lazarus was sick was not an accident, or coincidence. It was a part of providence. Because God had a plan. 
that this sickness would give him glory. I need you to understand something. The world does not revolve around you. The universe does not revolve around you. That's right. In fact, if you didn't know, let me tell you, it's really not about you. Amen. It's about God. Amen. You and I would not exist without God. That's right. And we exist for the glory of God. Amen. And every now and then we might be in some uncomfortable situations and circumstances, but we need to understand that everything happens for a reason. And the reason why it happens is for the glory of God. Oh God. Amen. And that's what the sisters didn't understand, or the disciples didn't understand, because they were experiencing the situation. And I'm going to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that right now, today, you may not understand why you're going through what you're going through. You're faithful in your tithing. You're faithful in your church attendance. You're always trying to be a witness about Jesus. You're helpful in the community, but things in your life go from worse uh, to worse to the worst in your life. But I'm here to tell you, you may not understand it now, but you'll understand it back. Bye -bye. By and by. Because ultimately it's for the glory of God. This was Jesus' signature miracle. This was the one, the last one that he gave them in John's gospel that, that, that proved he was indisputably the Son of God. Amen. And, and Jesus could have chosen anybody, but he chose somebody that he loved. In other words, uh, Jesus, watch this, he trusted Mary, Martha, and Lazarus with a problem that was so bad it required a miracle to get them out. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm here to tell you, if your situation is so big that only God can get you out of it, when he gets you out, only God will get the glory. Amen. Amen. That's what he wants. That's right. uh, this thing, Jesus said, is for the glory of God. But there's a second reason. Okay. Why God did not come when they, they called him. Not only do we see the glory of God, but we see the love of God. Can somebody shout the love of God? Yeah. The love of God. The, the, the love of God. If you look at verse 3, the sisters sent a message to Jesus and they did not even name their brother. Uh -huh. Verse 3 says, the sister said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. In other words, Jesus, we know who you love real closely. And that guy, Lazarus is sick. This word translated lovest comes from the Greek word phileo. In other words, this was a love of friendship for Jesus is fully God, but he was fully man. And in his humanity, he, he needed a friend who was close to him. And, and his closest friend, according to John's gospel, was this man Lazarus. So him not showing up had nothing to do with the fact that he didn't love him. He loved him. In fact, if you look at verse 5, but verse 5 says the same thing. In essence, verse 5 says, now Jesus, what everybody? Love. Loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And this word loved is translated from the Greek word agape at its root. It, it actually means that his love for them was an all-encompassing, unconditional love. So, so in other words, uh, what they need to understand was uh, uh, his delay had nothing to do with his feelings about them. Had nothing to do with uh, his relationship with them. Because he still loved them. Our problem is we are tempted often successfully by the devil 
to believe that our circumstances mm. are a reflection of how God feels about us. But I'm here to tell you that what you're going through has nothing to do with how God feels about you. Have you forgotten Jesus said, in this world, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. In other words, I love you, but every now and then, it's going to get rough. It's going to get ugly. It's going to be messed up. It's going to be unfair. It's going to be painful. But I still love you. Amen. I just need you to trust that I love you. Amen. Even when those circumstances are unpleasant. Mm. You ever see the love of God? You see, God wants us to understand that, that he, he loves us even when he lingers. Uh, he loves us even when he delays arriving uh, in our circumstances. And, and don't judge his love mm. by what's in your bank account. Don't, don't judge his love by, by the pains and aches in your bodies. Don't judge his love by the state of your relationships. God loves you Amen. no matter what you're going through, and That's he right. needs you to believe him. In other words, he, he needs you to trust his heart, Amen. even when you can't trace his hand. Amen. He needs you to know that he still loves you. Amen. But you know, it's even deeper than that. Ooh, the love of Jesus is so amazing, because when you look at verses 33 to 35, we find these words, John 11, 33 to 35, when Jesus Therefore saw her, what everybody? Weeping. Weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her. He groaned mm, in the spirit and was troubled and, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And then the shortest verse in the entire Bible. That's right. Two words. What are they, everybody? Jesus. Jesus. Even though Jesus was in one sense responsible for allowing things to get so bad that Lazarus was not just sick, he was now dead. Jesus who loved him and loved his sisters could feel their pain. And I'm here to tell you that, that, that while Jesus may not stop you, from being in a painful place, mm. he'll be with you, Elder. Amen. 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 In your pain. Yes. Amen. I can hear him saying, Lord, I'll be with you always. Mm -hmm. Even to the end of the world. If you're going through, I'm going through with you. Amen. I know what you're feeling. That's right. I know how it hurts. Mm. And while I can't stop the pain, I'm right there beside you. Amen. Amen. Yes, my mother, my mother tells me about how when I was a baby, this is not the first time I had pneumonia. She tells me when I was an infant, I had double pneumonia. Mm. She said that as a mother, nurses would come and it seemed like every few minutes come and stick needles in my arm. Mother said I would scream out in pain. Maybe, maybe that's why even now I hate needles. I don't know. But, but she said every time they would stick me with the needles, she would feel the pain. But she couldn't grab the hands of the nurses and stop them from sticking me because it was necessary that I go through the pain in order to get the healing that was required. And all I'm saying is that while God may not stop it, mm. he'll stay there, listen to me, Amen. until it stops. Amen. 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 We see, we see in this story that, that God doesn't come when, when they call him, but it's because of the glory of God. Why he doesn't come 
when they call him, we still see his divine the love of God. There's one last reason, at least one last reason why he doesn't come. But in fact, when, when they call him, it's because we see, lastly, the grace of God. Who can somebody shout the grace of God? The grace of God. Well, the Bible is quite clear that, that, that there is a reason why he doesn't come. And that reason is because of the grace of God. In fact, if you look at your Bibles at verses 14 and 15, we see Jesus talking about it. Verse 14, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is what everybody did. Yeah. Now you would think after that, he would say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sad. Mm. I feel so bad that Lazarus is dead. But no, Colonel, in verse 15 it says, and I am what? Glad. I'm glad for your sakes that I was not dead. Why are you glad, Jesus? For a morning, Jesus. He tell us why, to the intent ye may believe. Amen. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. What's the point? You see, even church people sometimes need you to go through what you're going through so their faith can get strong. What he's saying, Jesus, he said, for them to believe, but, but, they, but Peter already believes. James, John, these other disciples, they already believe, but, but their belief wasn't strong enough. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus said, you know, I'm glad I didn't show up. Because as a result of my not showing up, I'm getting ready to show out. Amen. Mm -hmm. And when I show out, it's going to boost your faith. Amen. I want you to understand that, that, that when you go through, other folk in the church are watching you Amen. as you go through. That's right. Because they need to know that even when you're going through, you got to hold on to his hands. Right. And I'm going to tell you that, that if you can hold on, you'll help sister so and so. To hold on. Mm. If you hold on, you don't know. Somebody else in Sabbath school will hold on. Amen. God, God will put you in a place where you're going through, and other people who follow Jesus will see it. Amen. And say, I need more faith. Amen. So I'm not going through half of what she's going through. And I'm ready, ready to throw in the towel. I need to hold on. God a little bit more, but it's deeper than that. I told you we, we see the grace of God because in, in verse 45, can you see verse 45? It's all over now. Jesus showed up to the tomb and he said to the tomb, Lazarus, come forth. I believe it was necessary that he said, Lazarus, Amen. come forth. Because Carlos, he said, I have all power. That's right. If he didn't just say Lazarus, everybody, everybody That's right. would have come forth. Right. So he specified, Lazarus, I'm talking to you. I want you to come out. Amen. And they loosed him, man. And let him go. But verse 45 says, Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, what everybody? Believed on him. Oh God. 
See, Mary and Martha didn't understand that Jesus was holding a revival. Amen. Amen. And the illustration was their brother Lazarus. Amen. You see, not only will church people grow their faith as you go through your pain, mm. but watch this, there are people who don't even know Jesus. That's right. Who will come to Jesus That's right. when they see how Jesus is operating in your life. The, the folk, they showed up, they, they, they were co-workers, they were friends, they were schoolmates of Mary and Martha, and their thought was, it's over for Lazarus. <laughs> but when they saw what Jesus did for Mary and Martha, they said, that same Jesus is the one I need to follow. Amen. Amen. And I'm here to tell you, you don't know who's watching. That's right. You don't know who's paying attention to you. Who's saying, I want to know, is their religion real? Amen. And the only way folk can know your religion is real is when they see God operating in your life in real time. Amen. And when God shows up in your life and makes a way out of no way, you can testify to your neighbors and your friends. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. I mean to tell you that others are watching and God is using your situation to extend grace to the lost. For God saved because God didn't show up when they called. I mean, they already knew he was a healer. That wouldn't have shocked or surprised anybody. But after four days, dead man gets raised. They said, this man must be the son of God. Don't you know how the Christian church grew in the first place? Mm. From a handful of believers? It's because of persecution. And when believers said, I don't care what the government does to me, I know that God is true. And I'd rather obey God than men. And they, they marched into arenas and were eaten by lions, but they were singing praises to God. Folks said, sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Right, my name. Folk, Folk got excited because they saw what the Christians went through, and they still held on to God. Amen. Amen. He'll tell you that he didn't show up because of the glory of God. He didn't show up, but there was still the love of God. And he didn't show up because he needed Dora to extend the grace of God. I'm done. I'm, I really am. But I just want to inform you that if you forget everything that I've said today, just remember this. No matter what you're going through, God, who may not come when you call him, he will show up when the time is right. Amen. 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 Yeah. I can't tell you how long. It might be four days. Four years. It might be four years. That's right. It might even be 40 years. But I want you to understand that he will show up. You know, in the final analysis, the fact of the matter is, his delay set in motion a chain of events that had to happen. You see, if he had come when they called him, Lazarus wouldn't have died. <laughs> but if Lazarus wouldn't have died, the Sanhedrin would not have called an emergency meeting. Mm -hmm. Read it when you get home the rest of the chapter. <laughs> and they said, this man is so powerful. He's raising the dead back to life. We know Passover is coming. 
But we better kill him during Passover. Not understanding that that was already a part of the plan. Amen. And you see, God, who needed keeping with prophecy for Jesus to be crucified at Passover, had to delay it so he could raise up Lazarus, so they could conspire to kill him during the Passover. You see, if he had come when they called him, they would have killed him at the Passover. And all the prophecies would have been defunct. So you don't understand that God has a 10,000 foot perspective on your case. I try to tell the little Lance Corporals, Master Sergeant, <laughs> that all you see is your little shot, but the CO sees a whole lot more. Right. Just trust that when you get orders, it's for victory in the end. Amen. Amen. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But you know, it reminds me of Memphis. I passed the four churches before being commissioned, and my last trip was in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm. I remember it was a Sabbath afternoon, in fact. I was driving down the interstate uh, that loops Memphis, and I saw a car on fire mm. on the side of the road. It was a big blaze. <laughs> and so what did I do? Well, I immediately called 911. Now, my expectation was when I called 911 that an operator would immediately answer. No. However, I was put on hold. I said, this is jacked up. I said, the 911 over here is messed up. I'm calling. There's a car on fire. Somebody could be dying, but they're not picking up. And for years, I always thought that there was a problem with 911. But just this year, my sister took a course to become a 911 operator in DC. Uh -huh. And I told her about the 911 operators in Memphis. <laughs> and she schooled me like this. She said, well, what it is, Daniel, is that the 911 operators can see uh, where your call is coming from, from the tower. And they had no doubt already received many calls from right there. So they already knew what the problem was. And they were already dispatching folk to deal with it. So even though they did not answer your call, they were still on the case. But what am I saying? I'm saying you may not hear God speak back to you in the dark place where you are, but we serve a God who testifies in Isaiah before you call, I'll answer, and while you're yet speaking, yes. Yes. I will hear. Amen. Uh, I think you're ready to sit down. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I am impressed with somebody in this story. I, I'm ready to sit down, but I, I got to tell you, I'm impressed because if you look at verse 21, I promise I'm going to sit down after this, but, <laughs> but I am impressed with somebody in this story. Because in verse 21, Martha runs up on Jesus and she has a case. She says in verse 21, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. In other words, Jesus, this whole funeral is because you didn't show up when we called you. However, don't miss verse 22. It reads, but I know. Who I wish somebody was following the stand. Because he didn't show up, Jesus. My brother Lazarus is dead. But I know that even now he's in the grave, Jesus. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Amen. In other words, Martha had some 
strong faith. Amen. Amen. As I sit down, let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, what you need is some faith like Martha yeah. that says, God has delayed and my life is messed up. But I know that God is able. That's right. Can anybody in the house hear Joe who lost all his children? Who lost all his wealth? And then lost his health? Say, I'm jacked up, but I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. That he just stand at the latter day upon the earth. And the worms destroy this body in my flesh. Shall I see God? Anybody can praise him when you got money in your pocket. Live in a big house. And drive a fancy car. But God needs some folk like Job who will testify though he slay me. Yet will I trust in him. Martha said, Jesus, it's all messed up because you didn't come. But I know that you are the son of God. I know you're the resurrection and the life. I know you got all power in your hands. I know that you still love me. I know that you care about me. I know that you hear my prayers. And I know that one of these days, you're going to come back and put me in a mansion you prepared on high. You need faith that says, even when he doesn't show up, I know. I know. Yes, I know. As his bow. And I suppose. I know what you're going through. Is a horrible thing. A painful thing. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know what's happening here. I'm not going to pretend that I understand. I don't understand. But I'm here to tell you that even if he hasn't shown up yet, he'll be there after a while. But you got to know like Martha that he's able. Well, if you're going through right now, Something serious. If life is great, life is grand, God bless you. But I'm talking to somebody in the house of God that's going through a, a painful predicament. You're in a dark place. You don't know what to do. You're suffering and you're struggling. If that's you, I want to invite you to stand right now because I'm going to, to ask God to hold you up. 